Uh, my name is Patrick Gillespie. Uh, I'm working on the uh, Erasmus KA2 project response, uh, and uh, the partner on the project is uh, the Russian County for Croatia. So today I'm with uh, uh, Nevojša Bujanovac, I always pronounce the Zhe wrong, <laughs> uh, who works for the Red Cross for Varazhna County. And uh, yeah, uh, Nevojša, uh, Nevoj we want to know a bit more about uh, your experience and uh, so we can pass it on as training materials uh, in our project. So the main thing uh, to begin with is, uh, can you tell us how you became a volunteer and why you decided to go into civil protection and humanitarian aid? Well, uh, I was a volunteer for some 20 years uh, before I became director of the Red Cross of Arash and Country. Mm -hmm. And uh, the reason I chose Red Cross is because uh, it had the best uh, options for education and for action of all uh, non-government organizations in Northern Croatia. So, um, it had a great uh, education program for crisis interventions. And I was uh, dealing with crisis interventions for quite some time in my life because mm -hmm. I'm psychotherapist mm -hmm. by, by profession and social pedagogue. Mm -hmm. So, this is my, uh, my area of work. Mm -hmm. And I was uh, involved with crisis interventions since 1990s because I worked with uh, uh, risk groups, with uh, war veterans uh, who were at risk of, of uh, suicides. Mm -hmm. And the Red Cross gave me a platform for doing this on a much uh, broader level. Mm -hmm. So this is the reason I chose Red Cross. Mm -hmm. So to help as many people as possible. Yes, of course. Okay. So uh, as, uh, as uh, right now you're working as a director here yes. uh, in Raj County. Can you tell us about some of your daily duties and some of your responsibilities? Well, there are many daily duties. Uh, there is administration, of course, because this is an organization with 35 employees and uh, some 300 volunteers. So we had a lot of work. Mm -hmm. We are doing several projects, uh, mostly with older people. We have two projects uh, with, uh, with dealing with, with care with older people in their homes. So this is something very good for them. Mm -hmm. We have over 300 users, and this is really a lot for such a generation. Uh, we have a team for crisis interventions. Mm -hmm. uh, we are doing uh, interventions of uh, suicide and of uh, domestic violence also mm -hmm. uh, on daily basis. So there, there are lots of uh, interventions every day. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a team which exists for some seven years now, and we had 2,400 interventions until now. I, I counted uh, a few days ago. Okay. So, this is uh, a big part of my, of my duties. And uh, also, I do a lot of meetings of uh, educations and so on. So, this is really very uh, challenging job mm -hmm. and really uh, with uh, very different aspects. Okay. And I love it. It, it keeps you on your toes. Yes, every day, every day. Uh, maybe you could tell us a little bit more about these challenges that you're facing, so the interventions uh, yeah. that you have as well. So, what are the so when you have an intervention, mm -hmm. uh, what is usually the biggest challenge for the people? Well, the biggest challenge is uh, the system mm -hmm. because uh, it's really hard to uh, get people to trust the system. There are many people who are suicidal or who suffer uh, domestic violence mm -hmm. and they um, often do not trust the system, but we are a NGO and uh, many people trust us much more than they trust the organizations which are part of the system. So this is one of the challenges. We have great cooperation with, with police and other institutions, mm -hmm. but also we are doing many interventions on our own, especially uh, prevention of suicide. 
Mm -hmm. Because many of those people uh, do not want to go to the psychiatric hospital or something like that. Right. And, and this is really challenging. So convincing them to seek yes. help. Yes, of course. Of course. Uh, in your opinion, uh, is there any specific action that you could uh, maybe mention that's helping you to improve uh, the actions of the Red Cross? Uh, the actions, that, well, uh, you mean me, not me. Uh, yes. Or <laughs> well, uh, as an organization and, yeah, okay. and you as well. Well, uh, education is the key. Mm -hmm. uh, we are doing a lot of education for our members, and I also attend a lot of education. So we try to improve ourselves uh, all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a very, very good system of education for privacy donations. Uh, because we are doing a lot of uh, practices which are uh, simulation of uh, real life situations. Mm -hmm. And this is the best way to, to learn. Okay? So, I can demonstrate this, so, uh, but, but we don't have time now for okay. that. Okay. So, it would be for instance like a, you're given a scenario that yes. you have to solve. Yes, yes, yes. What would you do in, in their shoes? Yeah. Yes. Okay. And, and this is a great way to learn because people uh, are doing a great job as uh, an old uh, person. Yes. Mm -hmm. so this is great. Okay. Uh, moving on to my next question, it's about uh, people who are seeking volunteer positions or board positions, mm -hmm. uh, let's say at the Red Cross or similar yeah. organizations. So my first question is, are there job opportunities? Is there a demand for new, uh, new employees or new volunteers? Well, uh, only in the context of European projects, because we really need employees to be with the women as uh, caregivers for the elderly. Mm -hmm. But uh, there is also uh, the, the problem because we cannot employ uh, on permanent basis anymore mm -hmm. because we are financed from the county mm -hmm. and we have uh, limited funds. Okay. So this is the problem. <laughs> so, that is, so it's always temporary work? Yes, it's, or always temporary. it's always temporary. So, what advice could you give someone who's uh, looking to work as a volunteer or as an employee at the Red Cross? What what skills or what attitude do they need to present? Well, uh, skills of uh, psychological, uh, giving psychological help, this is the, the most important skill. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, communication skills, teamwork skills, uh, a desire for learning. Mm -hmm. It's very important. So, uh, and they need to be very flexible mm -hmm. because this is not something that you know you can give someone direction and now you do a job there. Right. Everyone needs to be very flexible in this. So, this okay. is one very important advice. Okay. Now, I'm at my last question here is uh, we have a main theme in our project and it's social resilience. So, relating to communities being hit by mm -hmm. catastrophes mm -hmm. or disasters. So, in your opinion, what does social resilience mean and why is that an important thing? So, it's, it's very important. It's, uh, well, Red Cross has uh, a policy of uh, rising uh, social resilience through education about first aid, about psychological help, about all those things which are needed in the case of, of uh, disaster. And we are doing that in schools, in uh, other organizations. So, uh, as much people need to learn as possible the uh, techniques of helping others. This is the way to rise to rise the level of this and uh, push resilience uh, and uh, a way to re uh, to respond to the to the disasters. Okay. Uh, Nebojša, thank you very much for your time and uh, thank, you. thank you for contributing. Thank you. <laughs>